Welcome to Libro Assurance ISO training video series. This video introduces the structure of ISO management system standards. New ISO management system standards follow a common structure, including same numbering, similar concepts etc. In this video, we will briefly explore the high level structure and the general content of the key clauses. The high-level structure is a standardized framework for management system standards that establishes common terms, basic definitions, concepts, and clauses. All new ISO standards, such as ISO 9001, 14001, 45001, and so on, are based on the high-level structure, which facilitates the integration of management systems from various disciplines. This method of standardization aids in the preservation of quality and consistency in the development of ISO standards. The high-level structure consists of 10 sections or clauses. The first three clauses are introductory and include key definitions related to the standard. The last seven contain the specific requirements for the relevant management system against which a company can be certified. All sections are present in the new standards editions, however, each management system standard introduces its own concepts and subject-specific requirements, especially in Section 8 which deals with operational activities. In the following sections we will briefly explain what each clause is about. All sections are based on the plan, do, check, act cycle, which uses these elements to implement change within the organization's processes, in order to drive and maintain improvements. This plan do check act chart, can be directly linked to the clauses of the high level structure. The chapters of the high level structure, fit to the PDCA cycle as follows. The scope section describes what the standard is about and who it is useful for. ISO 9001, which focuses on quality, specifies requirements for an organization that needs to demonstrate its ability to consistently provide products and services that meet customer and applicable statutory and regulatory requirements, and to enhance customer satisfaction. ISO 14001, the international standard for environmental management, specifies requirements for organizations seeking to manage environmental responsibilities. One concept shared by all standards, is that standard requirements, are generic and applicable to most organizations, regardless of, size, type, complexity, service or product provided. Clause 2 contains the list of standards necessary for the implementation of the relevant standard. For instance, ISO 9001 of 2015 refers to ISO 9000 of 2015 for the fundamentals and vocabulary used in the standard. While in ISO 14001 of 2015, ISO 50001 of 2018, and ISO 45001 of 2018 there are no normative references. The third clause of each standard, includes a list of definitions, necessary for understanding and applying the standard. The terms and definitions section includes the basic common terms, as well as other subject specific terms. Many of these definitions and terms, originate from ISO 9000 standard. The fourth section covers requirements for understanding the organization's context, in order to implement a management system. It specifies the requirements for identifying internal issues as well as, external issues, identifying interested parties and understanding their needs, identifying the management system's scope, determining the processes required for the management system and how these interact. The subsections included in this section cover Understanding the organization and its context. Understanding the needs and expectations of interested parties. Determining the scope of the management system. The management system, for instance, 
quality, environmental, occupational health and safety etc. The purpose of this clause, is to highlight the need for top management to be actively involved in the implementation of the management system. Top management, can demonstrate commitment to the management system, by establishing and communicating the relevant management system policy, assigning roles and responsibilities throughout the organization that are clearly understood, promoting continual improvement, creating awareness on the relevant discipline of the standard, for instance quality, environment, occupational health and safety, energy etc., throughout the organization. The typical clauses included in this section cover leadership and commitment, policy, and lastly, roles, responsibilities, and authority. The organization should always plan for the management system's ongoing operation. Risk-based approach is crucial in order to address risks and opportunities, and ensure that the management system can prevent or reduce unfavorable effects. The management system's risks and opportunities must be assessed, and management system objectives, and improvement plans, must be identified. The standard clauses contained in this section are, actions to address risks and opportunities, objectives, and planning to achieve them. The support clause, is concerned with the management of all resources, required for the operation of the management system, including human resources, buildings and infrastructure, the working environment, monitoring and measurement, resources, and, organizational knowledge. The section also includes requirements for competence, awareness, communication, and document control. The typical clauses included in this section cover resources, competence, awareness, communication, and documented information. The operation clause deals with the required processes for operations, acceptance criteria, contingency plans for conformances, incidents and emergency preparedness, change management and control of external providers, such as contractors, outsourced processes, procurement etc., is also required. For instance, in ISO 9001, this section includes requirements, on operational planning, product or services requirements, design and development of products or services, review, and changes of requirements, control of external providers, production, and release of products or services, and control of non-conforming outputs. Within the operation clause, the first subclause, is concerned with operational planning and control. The rest subclauses are subject-specific, according to the requirements of each discipline. Section 9, covers requirements to help an organization monitor whether the management system is functioning effectively. It contains requirements for monitoring and measuring organizational processes, assessing customer satisfaction, conducting internal audits, and conducting ongoing management reviews of the management system. Some requirements in this section are subject-specific. ISO 9001 for example, tracks customer satisfaction, whereas ISO 45001, and ISO 14001, require evaluation of compliance. The typical clauses of this section cover, monitoring, measurement, analysis and evaluation, internal audit, and finally, management review. Last but not least, Section 10, focuses on the need to continually improve the management system. It emphasizes the need to identify areas for improvement, examine and assess non-conformities, implement corrective actions, and eliminate the causes. It is also critical, to evaluate the outcomes of analysis and assessment, as well as the outputs of management reviews, in order to address needs or opportunities as part of continuous improvement. The tenth clause contains the following two subsections, non-conformity and corrective action, and continual improvement.